Welcome to 30 Second Chances, where we ask deep contemplative questions and provide far too little time to formulate thoughtful, reflective answers. My guest today is studio legend Howard Schwartz. Howie, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. All right. You know the drill, 30 seconds on the clock, and then on to the next question. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. Question number one, describe your job to a five-year-old. I had to do that once for my children. They said, what do you do, Dad? And I said, <laughs> well, I lead people. And they said, I don't get that. I said, uh, you see all the voices on TV um, underneath the cartoons like Lion King and all that stuff? I record those people that are doing that singing and talking. That's what I did for a living. Now you've just killed their dreams because they didn't think they were really people. They thought the characters oh. were actually talking. Sorry. <laughs> you know, you're going to tell me there's no Santa Claus either. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, what a shame. Next question. Oh, okay. I didn't know how long that was going to be. So here we go. <laughs> All good. Okay, next question. The Howie Schwartz action figure has just been released. What two must-have accessories are bundled with it? Okay, for those people who know me, it's uh, usually a bagel. It was We were famous for uh, 10 dozen bagels every day, three pounds of butter, three pounds of cream cheese. So it's got to be a bagel. And the other thing would probably be my glasses. I have nine million pairs of glasses. You know, <laughs> they're all over the place, and they've, all, they've always been something odd. Uh, and, do you lose them on your head and stuff like that? or No, um, I just wear many different, uh, different uh, flavors of glasses. Re I wore red glasses for 30 years. Nice. Okay, next question. Steve Irwin has you in a headlock. What's he telling the audience about you and your native habitat? <laughs> Steve Irwin. The Australian guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the guy with the uh, alligator under his arm. That I don't. Of... I don't eat my young. And uh, let's see. I do swim, uh, but not in that kind of stuff. What does he tell? That's a hard one. <laughs> well, you already covered um, the bagels part because usually yeah. they talk about the diet and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I'm not very delicious. I'm just a chubby Jewish guy from Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Next question. If you could have one pointless or semi-useless superpower, what would it be? Semi-useless. I was going to say fly, but that's not useless. Uh, that's, everybody wants to fly. Yeah. Um, I'd like to be able to mow the lawn by just looking at it. So um, that's I like my superpower. That. Because I got a lot of lawn here, and um, we lawn spend mower a man. Yeah, <laughs> have a little mower on top of your on, on your. Yeah, there was somebody did the music for a movie called Lawnmower Man. It was, uh, and there was a two. There was a two to that movie also. Oh dear God! Yeah. Okay, uh, next question. What's the one piece of gear you regret selling, and why? Oh, one piece of gear. Uh, my nine foot Steinway concert grand from my big studio that everybody in the world played on. Um, I had no place to put it when it was time for the studio to close up. It, from Yo-Yo Ma to uh, Bernstein to, I mean, just a jillion people played on my Steinway and it was uh, the love of my life. It was just ama amazing, nine foot concert grand called the D. Next, next question. What skill did you, do you have that you never thought would come in handy, but has come in very handy in your work? Um, I hated history uh, when I was a kid and I have a knack for trivia, which is essentially history. And I can pull stories from anywhere, which is what my lifeblood is right now. Um, it's just remembering and making people smile, telling all those stories. So history. That's interesting. Yes, I've been told that my brain is a warehouse of useless trivia. So right, <laughs> everybody says, "Why do you remember that junk?" Exactly, and and sometimes you wonder, "Why the hell do I remember these things?" Yes, because it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was it was a good time. All right, next question. What's the most creative backhanded compliment you've ever received? 
nice hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the, the backup line to that was nice side of hair because I've been like this since I got out of the service in uh, 1968. Well, My well, hair fell out. It is a nice do. It does suit you. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, next question. What's the weirdest thing you believed as a small child? Mm. That I was going to be the first bassoonist of the New York Philharmonic. Um, I play the bassoon. I went to the Eastman School of Music, and that was my dream come true is to be the first bassoonist of the New York Philharmonic. That's not very funny, but um, it's oh. the truth. What was the old joke about? How do I get to Carnegie Hall? Yeah, uh, Practice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I took lessons from the first bassoonist there, Manny Ziegler. And um, uh, as I grew older, uh, playing more, um, I pl was able to play Tuscanini's uh, uh, library that was held by the Buffalo Philharmonic. And there was uh, a guy by the name of Polizzi, who's a Philadelphia bassoon from the Philadelphia Orchestra. And then he wound up in the NBC Symphony and I had all his markings. And that was like, that was a big deal for me. That's like watching Paul McCartney's fingering charts, you know? Nice. Next question. What would 15-year-old you be most and least impressed with about present-day you? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you got a lot of sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> I have a million sweaters. I've been collecting because of... So, sorry about that. Upstate um, New York, you know, upstate you New York, sweaters, yeah. right? Yeah, it's it's cold up here. So, uh, although I do yeah. love the Reverend look you've got right now, that's uh, it's a turtleneck. It's three layers. It was twenty two degrees this morning. Can so. we call you Father Schwartz? No, oh, yeah, there you go. That's a, that's it. All right. That concludes our questions. Uh, thank you for, however, I'm going to put 30 seconds more on the clock and I'm going to allow you to either answer for me a question you wish I had asked you or pontificate on life or shamelessly plug something or ask me a question. It's 30 seconds to do with what you wish, go. Wow. Um, uh, I had a long history, I have, still have the history growing, um, had a long history in the music, sound, recording, television, movie business. I have a lot of friends around the world and it was really a pleasure and still is. And it's also wonderful to have stories cross mingle. You know, it, it, this became that and oh, I was there and have somebody show up on Facebook and so on. And it's just, it's a wonderful life. I absolutely agree. And I think we're very, very fortunate to have been in this industry during the era we've been in it. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah, it's true. People don't believe half the stuff you tell them. No, you can't because you can't make it up. You know, one of the things that was 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 crazy is that I learned how to borrow money. Um, and so that was my uh, big deal was that I could buy a console for a million dollars and put it in my studio and that was, you know, it was before computers. These are all analog consoles. So my first MCI console cost about $250,000. My first uh, SSL console, which was, I think it was like 80, 88 or something like that. Uh, it was a G. Was it a G mm -hmm. console? Yeah. Because I had a 9,000 also. Uh, but my 9,000 was over a million. That was the first digital console that didn't work oh, yeah <laughs> and after a year i, I gave it back well yeah oh my god it was not awful fondly. <laughs> no the mic breeze sucked and there was uh thank you for thank god for focus right with their mic breeze we had a million of them but anyway um that was an interesting time that that was you know that was the big deal and i always ask people what do you think the people that work for me and my clients and the, and I would always go, that's it. You got it. And it was just easier to include people in my life than to try and be Mr. Know-it-all. I call myself a maven, but it's about other stuff. 
<laughs> but uh, not like that. Yeah, I always said I never want to be the smartest guy in the room. No, nope. last one to speak. Although I can't help myself a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs>